Hey there, stampers and crafters. My name is Tammy White from stampwithtammy.com and welcome to our day late Tuesday <laughs> online, online live class. And um, so I apologize for the uh, sound issues that we had yesterday and I am hoping, hoping, hoping that you guys can hear me today. Um, I had everything fixed yesterday. I came on and everything sounded great. You guys helped me with the test and that was awesome. And then this morning I got in here, I had sound issues again, so I'm not really sure what's happening. I don't know if it's my computer or if there's something else going on there, but I am just waiting for you guys to pop on and tell me that you can hear me. And <laughs> I think the fact that my phone made noise is a good sign that the sound is working today. So welcome aboard, everybody. And if I look like I'm looking over here, I'm just looking at comments that are popping up over here. I promise I'm not being rude. <laughs> we are um, having a little bit of a snowstorm here in Massachusetts, and probably a few of you are in my area are um, enjoying the storm. Uh, it's March, so it's a little bit late for us to be having some weather. Um, my son at school has already said they're at least going to have a delay tomorrow, if not um, a snow day. It looks like we're going to be getting, at least in my area, quite a bit of snow tonight. So, very interesting spring storm. <laughs> awesome. Oh my gosh, thank you, Sandy says. You can hear loud and clear. Thank you. Phew. <laughs> Oh, you know, technical issues, sometimes they're fun. No, they're never fun. They're never fun. <laughs> All right, that's great. Thank you, Mary. Oh, my gosh, I'm so glad that you guys, I'm so glad that you guys can hear me okay. All right, so uh, thanks again for your patience, and I'm so sorry that things didn't work out yesterday. And if you're watching the, the replay later on YouTube, you're probably like, what the heck is she talking about? But those of you who, who watch us live on Facebook, I, I know you understand yesterday, we came on for our regularly scheduled Tuesday online class and there was no sound <laughs> and I had no idea how to fix it. And so thankfully I got some help. We got it fixed and I know it's been a little wonky today, but I think we're, we'll be good for the rest of this class. Fingers crossed. So uh, let's talk about what's happening um, in stamping world. We'll start with the in the no section. And so, uh, it, it, just so you're kept up to speed with what's happening in the stamping world while a bunch of you are popping online, I have a double frequent buyer point special that's happening from now until March 15th. Um, this is for all orders in my online store. You get frequent buyer points with every $25 you spend. Right now you're going to get two points instead of one and you can collect those to earn free stamps from me. It's a little, little thank you for me, for my, my customers that help me. As you know, this is my full-time job, so I like to give back as, because I get so much from you guys and I love to give back as much as I possibly can. So this is part of my $2 million celebration. And uh, I, I'm still on cloud nine for, for hitting that career milestone. And I love you guys. So it's a little giving back. And um, I, I have some, uh, some more little giving back in just a minute. I'll tell you about that. And celebration. This is the last month for it. Um, you can get free products with every $50 order. Um, you can join and get two free stamp sets in your demonstrator kit, which is already the best deal in the whole entire world. Um, you get $26 free when you buy it, you get free shipping, and now you get two free stamp sets. And you get free bonus stamping rewards with Celebration. So that ends on March 31st, and all the products, including the new ones, will be gone on March 31st. So there's details on that on my blog. You can click on the link in this video's description to get all of the info on that. And Paper Pumpkin Scoop! March is the fifth anniversary. We're going to get a special box. I'm very excited. You guys excited about this? I am very excited about the special box. I cannot wait to see what it looks like. I can't wait to see what's inside of it. And this month, there is going to be a special uh, free gift inside too. So I can't wait. It's always exciting. And you know, I'll open it live as soon as I get it because it's always my favorite thing to get in the mailbox. Um, there's also, you can marry the paper pumpkin on top of the free gift and on top of the, the special edition box. Um, Paper Pumpkin is a card crafting kit, by the way. For those of you who don't know what that is, um, it, it is a card crafting kit that comes every month. You can get it one month. You can get a subscription to it. Um, you can do these prepaid subscriptions in my online store and marry it with Celebration. So if you do three, six, or 12 month, you get free Celebration products with your um, Paper Pumpkin. But you have to sign up by March 10th in order to get um, the March kit with a free gift in it. And um, note, my Paper Pumpkin alternate project from the February kit was supposed to be on Friday. The whole snowstorm and the technical issues yesterday kind of set me back a little bit. So I might need to delay that class. And I will let you know tomorrow. I'm going to run like the wind tonight and see if I can get everything ready to launch for Friday's class. But if not, I'll post on Facebook and I'll post in the event for Friday's class. Okay, now here's the other thing. 
this is a new thing I started on Tuesday's on um, last Friday's class. Sorry, and I'm really excited about it. We got four minutes. I'm calling this my early bird special. If you jump on early, and oh my gosh, there's a ton of you on there. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, so you like the early bird special, I see. So if you're on early and you leave a comment, you're going to be entered into my early bird drawing, and I'm going to show you right now what you might win. So. What I've got here on the prize patrol table. These are all prizes that I'm giving away with this video if you leave a comment. So if you leave a comment, you are going to be entered into win. If you're live right now, you'll be entered into win everything. If you leave a comment before the 10 minute mark, you are entered to win my early bird drawing of the waterfront stamp set, which is the stamp set that I'm going to be stamping with today. I'm going to draw this one live in a couple of minutes, and you'll also get a bonus wink of Stella with that. At the end of this episode, I'm going to draw three more prizes live. So if you didn't win the early bird, if you showed up later in the broadcast, or if you just didn't win, um, you are still eligible to win one of these three prizes at the end, which is two more waterfront stamp sets. Again, Wink Stella coming with those. Or the um, Celebration Blossoming Basket Bundle, which is the, um, die, the I'm sorry, the folder and the it's the whole set, the, the Blooming Basket set. This is a level two, so you actually have to spend $100 to get it in the Celebration Store. I'm giving it away free at the end of this episode. Now, the last way to win, same thing, leave a comment, is my afterlife drawing. Now, these are for if you didn't win one of the, for the first two drawings or you weren't live. If you're watching this, uh, the replay, on, either on Facebook or on YouTube, you are eligible to win a Blooming Basket bundle, same exact bundle. I'm giving it away on March 20th. So it gives you a couple of days, actually it gives you a couple of weeks, to leave a comment on YouTube or on Facebook to be entered to win my Afterlife. Now the Afterlife has a bonus. If you are um, watching this live or Afterlife and you share this broadcast on Facebook and type the word shared, it's S-H-A-R-E-D, because I'm searching on that particular word, into the comments so I know that you shared it. I will enter you a second time into this afterlife drawing, so you get two chances to win if you do that. And that can be the only thing you t the only the only comment that you have to leave. If you don't want to leave any other comment, that's fine. But if you leave that one, you're automatically entered. If you share the the broadcast right now, I'm about to draw the early bird um, special. If you share this broadcast right now and type shared, you are automatically entered into everything. So, and it's still worth it if you're watching the replay to leave a comment because I do have that afterlife drawing. So today we're going to be focusing on um, the show. I'm showcasing the waterfront stamp set. So this is the final installment. Actually, it was yesterday because it was supposed to be yesterday before the technical difficulties. But yesterday's blog post and today's um, online class are my final installment featuring this awesome stamp set. And I can tell you guys are loving it because the orders were pouring in for the waterfront stamp set after our last one. And Linda and I, fe I featured it twice last week. We featured it on the Stampin' Scoop and we fe I featured it on Friday's class. And you guys were loving that. So you can see the entire series on my blog simply by clicking on the link in this video's description so you can see all of the other projects. I'm going to show them to you in just a minute. But first, as promised, oh, I see lots of people loving that early bird. Yay, I'm glad. I'm glad that you're loving that because I was pretty excited when I got I'm like, oh my gosh, we got to do this. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, so we're going to pop over now and draw that, that winner. So we're at the 10 minute mark. I'm going to pop on over to um, my giveaway site here. We're going to draw the winner live and then we're going to do some stamping. All right, so good luck to all of you who have already popped on. And I see there's a ton of you. Oh, my gosh, this is so exciting. Um, and we've already got, wow, 500 comments. That's awesome. I love you guys. I love you guys. Okay, so good luck to all of you. The winner is going to get the Waterfront Stamp Set and a Wink of Stella bonus brush. And that winner is, good luck. Ready? Stacy Neal Eakin. Congratulations, Stacy, for winning the early bird giveaway. All right, so don't fret because there's still three more giveaways at the end of this episode. All you need to do is leave a comment. All right, so who's ready for some stamping? You guys ready? So um, I'm just going to move all of our prize patrols out of the way. I'm going to talk about um, what we're making today because <laughs> I'm calling this my, my Pinterest fail this 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 um, distressed metal technique you're gonna die when you see how easy this is it was not what I was originally going for when I um, when I was originally designing this card class I was going for a masculine look and I love the foils um, and I started making a card and did you ever have one of those moments when you're looking at something on Pinterest and it looks so cool and you think, oh my gosh, I can do that. And then you go to make it and it looks nothing, nothing like what you thought it was supposed to look like. Okay. And in fact, it, it didn't even look good. Well, that's kind of what happened to me, except 
Mine, I didn't like what I originally came up with, but I loved my accidental <laughs> discovery. I loved my, my Pinterest fail. It actually was a, an actual, um, I'm going to call it a, a fail success. Does that even make sense? I don't know. I feel like I need to make up a word for that. So <laughs> anyway, so this is, I, I, I loved it. It looks like aged distressed metal. It's done with the Stampin' Up! foils. This is the, the waterfront stamp set here. Here's another one. I, I thought it was a, a cool masculine because men love that and play with metal, right? So this almost, it doesn't look like it's actually made with metal. This is the One Wild Bride stamp set. Now what's beautiful about these two stamp sets is this one, the waterfront was designed by uh, my friend Connie Heisey, who was the fifth uh, million dollar seller in Stampin' Up! And this is the one that we're going to make right now. Um, so Connie, actually she was right after me, I was number four, she was number five, she designed this waterfront stamp set. And when you hit a million dollars in career sales, which is, there's only been a few, so there hasn't been a ton, there's been about 23, 24 people in the entire 30 years of Stampin' Up! So that's pretty awesome. Um, you get to design a stamp set. And this one, One Wild Ride, was designed by my friend Don Griffin. So um, this is an, another awesome, awesome stamp set here. And again, these cards, the measurements are all the same. It's just a different stamp set. This is silver foil. This one's copper foil. And here's one in gold foil just to show that it's not all about the guys. You can make it beautiful for, for girls. Or this could be a guy card if you wanted to. And this shows it in gold. Same exact technique. And this is the Heartfelt Bloom Celebration set here. So we've got one done with the waterfront. And the words are from the Layering Love. And then we've got the Heartfelt Blooms as a celebration set. You can get free during celebration. Don't forget that ends this month. And the One Wild Ride. And that one is on the silver. So that just shows a little bit of um, different, just a couple different things that you can do there with the same exact technique. And um, if you miss these, these are just a couple of cards here you'll find on my blog from my series on the Waterfront Stamp Set just to see some completely different samples. I think this is probably the most versatile stamp set ever. <laughs> and um, this here, I love this one. This uh, I made on the Stampin' Scoop on Tuesday, so you can see the video of how to make this one on my blog. And you can see last Friday's online class to see how to make this and this. These two together I made on last Friday's class. All made with the same waterfront stamp set that I'll be using on today's card. So the first thing we're going to do today is stamp. So these are the two stamp sets. If you didn't, actually there's three stamp sets because we're also going to be using the burlap background stamp. Now, if you, if you didn't catch all that real quick, don't worry, you don't have to screenshot. You can rewind if you want to. But you can also pop on over to my blog at the link in this video's description and download, download this free PDF that has all of the instructions, uh, not sorry, not instructions, videos for the instructions. <laughs> but this has all the measurements and supplies on it. So I've got the measurements on all the cards. They're all the same, just different, just swapping out the, the neutrals and the foils. And also the complete supply list for everything used here. So the different stamp sets that I use, the burlap, the layering love on this one that we're using here, and then the, um, the different products that we'll be using here. You can download this on my blog. If you're not following along with the class but you want to do this at a later time, there is a URL here for you. So you can pop back and the video will be there as well as um, uh, it. it more information on these cards and close-up photos. If you have a smartphone, you can zap this QR code and get right there too. So, I'm going to start by doing our stamping. And here, um, I am going to be using a piece of crumb cake. I've pre-cut it all, but those measurements are on the free PDF. And I'm going to start with the, um, the burlap, which is the background stamp. And I'm going to ink this up with some crumb cake ink. So we're going to stamp it on crumb cake. I'm going to ink it up with some crumb cake. It's a very light color. And I want this to be very, very subtle, this background. So I'm going to take um, some scrap paper. And the first thing I'm going to do is rub the scrap paper because I, I want to get some of that ink off. I don't want it to be full color. And then I'm going to reuse the scrap paper a couple of times. <laughs> it's going to come handy a few times for us today. We're going to take that um, crumb cake panel. I'm going to put it on there and use the scrap paper to kind of keep my hands from getting inky and just rub it into the background stamp instead of flipping the stamp over and stamping it down. I found with these bigger stamps, you get a better image when you do it that way. So it's very light. It's very um, subtle, but it gives it some texture. So we're going to start with that. 
Then we're going to start with our, uh, we're going to continue on with our stamping of the waterfront pieces. Now the one thing about the waterfront stamp set, and I have uh, talked about this on the past couple of videos that I did using the stamp set, was I found before, when I first bought it, before I got started, I found the stamp set to be very intimidating. I'm not sure if any of you felt this when you first pulled it out of the box. <laughs> But I think the reason why it was so intimidating to me is I saw all of the beautiful samples, like the ones I just showed you, and they looked gorgeous, but I couldn't tell on many of them, I couldn't tell which of these pieces were used or how they were used, and because of that, I felt a little bit overwhelmed before I got started. Once I actually sat down and started playing with it, I was completely addicted. So, don't let it scare you. But I'm going to tell you exactly what pieces that I used to create this. Now, this background, I wanted it to look like a black and white photo. I wanted it to look like an Ansel Adams nature type photo. So I'm doing neutrals. I'm doing the black on the crumb cake. And um, I'm going to start with mountains. And for the mountains, let's see. I am going to use this stamp, which is this right here. And I'm going to stamp that in the in the black. Today we're stamping it in black. Now I've done it in other colors. You can see my the other videos to see it in other colors. But I'm going to start off the edge here to the left, and maybe about center, and stamp it. And then I'm going to continue stamping the mountains a little bit random, but I'm stepping them up each time I stamp them, so that they're kind of graduating a little bit maybe even one more over there. Okay, so we have our little bit of, of mountains in the background. And then I'm gonna take, this is the Z image, which is this little um, blobby right there. Blobby is my new word. <laughs> and we're gonna fill in some of um, this below so it kind of blends together. I might even do some repetitive stamping down there, just like I did with the um, the flag, if you guys saw the flag. Okay, so this is going to give us a little bit of our landscape. We've got, it almost looks like water down below now. And then we're going to take the trees and stamp the trees. Okay. So the trees, I want them to be in the mountains, but again, I don't want them to be too... Um, too perfect. We're going to stamp maybe these down a little bit so they're down into the mountain as opposed to being on top. And I don't love what I did there, so I'm just going to go over that one. Okay. All right. I'm going to make this mountain a little bit darker too because I don't want to see the tree image. There. Okay. So now everybody's, it kind of gives us that landscapey look now. Uh, before I put these trees away, I'm going to make the reflection on the water down below. So I've inked them up, but I'm going to stamp off twice on that scrap paper and just stamp them upside down lightly. Down, see how they have just a very, very faint reflection now, so they look like they're reflecting on the water. So now we have it's almost like a, a, a landscape, black and white, Ansel Adams, reflecting on the water over the mountains and the trees. <laughs> and then I'm just going to take the ink pad to start with and drag it around the edges right direct to paper because that gives it one look. But then I also wanted to fill it in a little bit more with the Stampin' Sponge. So I did both, sponged and direct to paper to age that a little bit. So now we've got an old fashioned black and white landscape scene here and it looks like it's textured on that canvas. And we're just gonna put this aside because we're gonna use that again in a minute. All right, actually, you know what? We'll use that again right now because it's gonna take a minute for this to dry. So what I have here is the copper or the foil, whichever color foil you're gonna use for um, your technique. And I'm gonna take that same um, black. This is the archival black, the Stampin' Up! archival black. And I'm just going to drag it right over. A little bit light. And 
I'm going to get both sides of it so it's, it's good. It's got a little bit of color on there. It's not too much of the same going on. I want, you know, when I want it to look like, like, like it's like oily, dirty, old metal. That's what I'm going for. So you need a little bit more, give it a little bit more. Now I'm going to put that aside because that's going to take a little bit of time to dry. And on this one, we are going to take and emboss the words right over the top of our image here. So um, I've got the emboss. Now somebody had an awesome idea here. Almost always when you're heat embossing, you want to use the, the emboss buddy because this will keep the static down um, and keep extra flakes. And especially in this case, you don't want extra copper flakes on your, your beautiful vintage photo, <laughs> black and white photo. So um, this is going to keep the static down. I'm going to pat this over the top. I call this the, if you regret this emboss buddy step, you will, if you forget it, you will regret it. And, um, oh, thank you, Bruni. So she says you're out doing yourself. Oh, you made my day. Thank you. It, um, somebody gave this awesome idea on the last time we heat in Boston. They said, take an elastic and keep that emboss buddy attached to your Versamark. And if you do that, you won't forget this step because every time you go to heat emboss, your emboss buddy is going to be right there smacking your face every time you grab this Versamark ink pad, which is what we'll use for the embossing. So this is a watermark ink pad, and I'm using the Live, Laugh, Love. This is from the Layering Love stamp set. And I'm going to ink that up with the Versamark and stamp that right over the very middle of this card. And I know you can't see it yet, <laughs> but don't worry, don't worry, that'll all, that'll all change. I'm going to take that scrap paper back, and we're going to take some copper embossed powder, because I love copper, you know I'm addicted to it. <laughs> Somebody said last week, I fear the day that they hit discontinue copper. <laughs> I know I might shrivel up and die. All right, so now I'm going to flick off the excess. And I did not do an awesome job with the embossed buddy because I can see there is a lot of static right here. I don't know if you guys can see that in the camera, but hopefully it's only right there. I'm going to wipe that off. And I used it and everything, but... Yeah, there's still quite a bit on there. All right, so this is going to be a good test as to one, why you want to use it and why you want to do a good job with it because you don't want excess flakes in here. And I apologize, this is very, very hard to see in the camera. Okay, I might have gotten it all off of there. All right, so then just go, I just put that in the scrap paper. I'm just gonna pour that right back in the jar. I know some people have these fancy, fancy little tubs for all their embossing powder, which is all good and fine, but I have a very small storage area, so I like the little jars because they, they store in a very small space and I also like this little guy that I got at the deli. <laughs> it's a mini cutting board for when I'm heating bossing to protect the table underneath. So I should tell you, this is a heat tool. It's not a hair dryer. <laughs> I, I actually was just talking to somebody yesterday and they said, I've been using my hair dryer and I don't, it's not working. And I was like, oh yeah, so it won't work with a hair dryer, will it? And, it? and it really doesn't ever get hot enough like this heat tool does. And, and it blows the powder kind of all over the place, which you don't want. Oh yeah, we're going to get a sparkly thing here, because I did a terrible job with the emboss buddy. If I had hired me to make this card, I would have fired me right now. Can you see that? I don't know if you guys can see on the camera what's happening with the emboss there. Isn't it beautiful? Sorry, burning my finger. But I want you to see it. There we go. <laughs> I'll hold it just the right angle. There we go. Gorgeous. Oh, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so this one is um, extra coppery. <laughs> but it's still beautiful. It's still beautiful. And you still, you know, you still get that look. It's an aged photograph. It's got the copper and heat embossed on it. All right, so I'm just going to put this panel aside and we're going to finish up with our distressed metal. So we started by taking the um, archival black ink pad direct to paper and just dragged it right across the top of that copper foil. And you can go back and watch the replay if you caught this later. 
And, oh, that is an awesome idea, Cindy. Thank you. She says, these little embossing jars fit in a K-cup carousel. Oh, <gasps> stop it. I don't even drink coffee, but now I need to go buy a K-cup carousel because that is a great way to store those. Thank you. You made my day. <laughs> All right. Now, here's where my accident, my happy accident came in. Okay, so this is um, a nail buffer. I just happened to have it sitting on the table the day I was playing around with this this um, the copper the copper paper when this Pinterest fail came to me, and um, anyways it's a four in one nail buffer. I, I happen to have it. I forget. I don't even remember where I got it, but I did see them on Amazon. I don't even know that you need this exact thing. You just need a, a buffing a buffing pad, which is a, a very fine grain, much finer than a sanding pad, but something that you would use on nails. And I used this four steps to this one. I used the roughest. So it's it's not very rough though. So it's a very very fine buffing paper, sanding paper, or a four in one nail buffer you can get on Amazon. I mean they're just they're really fairly cheap, or anything around the house pretty much that <laughs> that can work for that. And I literally just sanded or buffed. Look at, can you see that? It's so cool. And when it it just. The effect that it had on the foil and the, the, the black, it's, it's so realistic. And you can go different, you know, you can go different degrees of how much you want to sand that down to get the look that you want to go for. But literally, that was it. That was all there was to that. And you have that age, distressed, beat up piece of metal looking. And that's how quick and easy that, that technique was. It really was so easy. So much easier than the one I was originally trying to do. And honestly, I loved it so much better. It just came out better. That was one of those happy accidents. And all I have left here is <laughs> is to assemble. Lorian says you're making me want to leave work. <laughs> Go stamp. <laughs> oh, I don't blame you one bit. So I am actually assembling the entire card with snail adhesive. So um, it's all flat. There was I didn't pop any of this up with dimensionals, which is shocking for me because I always use stamp on dimensionals on something. I love that pop. Again, all of these measurements are on that free PDF. Um, now, one thing I found is that I can stick things to copper with snail, but I can't stick snail to the back of the copper foil. I can do it with the other foils, but I can't do it with copper. So what I did was instead of putting the snail on the back of this sheet, I put it on the base sheet. Don't know why. If you um, like the liquid glue, this this um, Tombow liquid glue, this is also in my online store. Uh, it's it's a great choice when you're working with foils or textured paper. A lot of people swear by that liquid glue. Personally, I'm a snail addict. I don't want to cheat on my snail. <laughs> we have a love hate relationship. That liquid glue, but it's all good stuff no matter what you choose here. Now before I go ahead and stick this down, um, I think I forgot my copper um, trim. Yeah, so I guess we're going to move forward without the copper trim, but um, you can get that in my online store too, and that just wraps around here and ties if you would like to use trim on that, but as you can see, you don't have to, and it still looks awesome. Okay. Oh, awesome. Amy says she's convinced she's going to have to get this set. I love the set. And again, tons of ideas for it on my stampwithtammy.com blog. Just click on the video's description. Now, I took this white panel and just cut it out to put on the inside because anytime I'm working with dark cardstock like black or Night of Navy or, you know, anything from the Regals pretty much, I like to layer white inside so you have a space to write in. Now, the last piece of this card, I use these um, metallic sequins. And these sequins worked for any of the foils, the gold, the silver, and the copper, because they're all in there. We have every color in there. And so I just took some, I just took the mini glue dot and stuck, and I use copper. Of course, copper is the last one to pop out here. But just stuck it right to the glue dots. All right, gold, it's not your turn, so you're going to have to find a new friend. <laughs> oh, he's a hanger. He wanted to be a piece of this card so bad. All right. And that just sticks. Whoops, one more glue dot. They just, if you see what I'm doing here, I'm sticking them right to the roll so I don't have to stick the glue dot to my finger. Saves your finger from being the middleman. And then I'm just going to stick that right. Oops. 
talking off about the dot. Right down here. And I use those sequins on all the cards. In fact, I'll pull out the other two just to show you the different colors. The, the silver, I use silver sequins. The gold, I use gold sequins. So you can kind of see, see the sequins down there, how they pulled the, the silver and the gold into the card. Very fun to work with. And our card is complete. <laughs> Again, another quick and easy card. Wow, there's a ton of you guys on here. Well, thank you guys for joining me today. Do you know what time it is? It's giveaway time. <laughs> Who's ready for some giveaways? Woo! Okay, so if you've left a comment here, you will be entered to win um, one of my drawings. If you popped in late, be sure to catch the replay so you can you can go back and see. Um, Jeanette says she has to have that set now, too. I, I love the set. Like I said, it was intimidating at first, but once you get playing with it, it is completely, completely addicting. And I can't, I mean, I can't stop. I'm like, my series is over. It's time to move on to, to show you guys some other stamp sets. But personally, like tonight, I feel like I'm going to go home. I'm going to go upstairs and, and make some more make some more cards with it because I'm addicted to it. It's a great, great set. All right, so if you've left a comment, you are automatically entered. I have two of those waterfront stamp sets, so um, if you don't have yours yet and you've left a comment, you might actually win one right now. And then I have one blossoming basket bundle to give away right now. Good luck, everybody. Um, and our first winner will be... This is the Waterfront Stamp Set and a Wink of Stella brush, and that is Sally Wallace. And the second Waterfront Stamp Set, actually this is the third because Stacy won the first one at our early bird 10-minute mark. And that one goes to Terry Talman. So congratulations, Sally, Terry, Terry and Stacy. Be sure to fill out the prize claim form. You've got the Waterfront Stamp Set and a Wink of Stella bonus, Wink of Stella Glimmer brush. All right, now the final prize patrol for today is the Blooming Basket bundle which is the die and stamp set for, from celebration very hard to get this is a level two celebration set and that one is to gloria stiller congratulations gloria be sure to fill out the prize claim form and um if you are not a winner don't worry i still have one more drawing one more drawing and that one is on march 20th so um you, you'll find all the winners announced on my stampwithtammy.com blog simply by clicking on the link in this video's description and click on contest and winners all of the winners from my, uh, any of my previous um, contests are there, as well as this one. And there's a prize claim form there. So if you've won, fill out that prize claim form. I will get this out to you. You have two weeks to claim it before I give it to somebody else. So <laughs> claim it now. I'll also announce them in my newsletter, and they will be on this project page, resource page, which is on my blog. All right. And um, my next class is scheduled for Friday because of the storm and the technical difficulties yesterday. I, I am running behind. I may need to reschedule that. I will update my Facebook events page and update the um, the the, uh, the the live video when I put in the reminder to let you guys know if we're on schedule for Friday at noon or if I have to, to move it back a day or two. I will keep you posted on that. I can't wait to get started. We'll be playing with some paper pumpkin fun. All right. Thanks, you guys, and have a great weekend.